The Penguin on HBO is a hit, but it might not be the only villain getting a show on HBO. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Shark Tutorial. I'm James, thanks for stopping by, and a special shout out to all of our new subscribers. It means a lot to us, so thank you so much for your support. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hoping to get to 3,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. I love you 3,000. If you're like me, you're loving The Penguin. I think this show is fantastic. It's a great extension from the Batman movie, taking us into the world, the gritty underground world of Gotham, learning about Oz Cobb, seeing his progression to power, learning the other players surrounding him, and how powerful they are makes The Penguin even more powerful. And we're going down this rabbit hole of how deep is it going to get and how dark is it going to get for this character and for this city as a whole. We have Sofia Falcone out there. Sal Maroney is out there. There's a lot going on in Gotham. Penguin, though, is at the forefront of all because he is the Penguin, one of Batman's main adversaries. And that's what makes this so compelling to me is that it is a very, obviously, it's a grounded look at, at Gotham, at the Batman universe. We don't, I don't have to tell you that. Everyone knows, right? It's this, uh, this is a realistic approach to Batman. And one of the things that I love about the Penguin is how it feels so intimate. It's a small story, right? It just, it's about Oz Cobb, Sophia Falcone, and like it's kind of just about them. And their rivalry, essentially, that's what it's about. It's about gaining trust, gaining momentum, taking back Gotham. To take him back Gotham! That's not to say I don't like some of the other stuff where you got the laser beams and the sky beams and all that stuff. It could be very fun. I'm not saying that. But I like that this is a refreshing take on the character and it fits within the Batman. But it also doesn't feel like homework. I know everyone likes to say that, that, you know, the superhero fatigue thing where it feels like homework, you have to watch this and you have to watch that. And I, you know, it sounds like a cliche when I say it. And it sounds very lame, like coming out of my mouth. Ew, 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 ew. But I did because it feels also true. This feels like an isolated story, but it also feels like it completely connects to the Batman. And it doesn't make any sense when you say it. Or if, and I'm pretty sure anybody who's listening without having seen this or the Batman would have no idea what I'm talking about. But they feel very much connected, but very separate from each other at the same time the batman is very film noir detective and the, and the penguin is very much a gangster film and i think that the gangster film works within the film noir so that's going to lead right into what i want to talk about today where matt reeves was talking to the rap about hbo and about making more series possibly kind of like the penguin with the penguin you may or may not know but it started off as the opening to the batman 2 the batman 2 is going to show oz Cobb's rise to power to mob power but instead, he had a meeting with, with HBO, with Warner Bros. and HBO, and they said, we want to do TV shows. And he pitched an Arkham show and a Gotham uh, PD show where it was going to be an honest cop in a corrupt environment, basically. That was the idea of that show. And HBO said, to paraphrase, they said, whoa, 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 hold back. Stand back. Take a step back. We don't want that. We're HBO. We want the top dog. So then he kind of mentioned what the Batman 2 was going to be. And when he talked about the beginning with Oz Cobb, HBO said, that's our show and they made the show and every week the ratings on this get higher and higher it's becoming a hit it's a massive hit people can't stop talking about it it's so much fun talking about it. the theories are phenomenal everything about this show is pure entertainment and it, it's written very well the acting is fantastic and obviously the makeup and wardrobe are top notch and while it is a limited series and we all know it's a limited series which is i think that's pretty good right because you don't want to overstay your welcome also and this if this is one story if this was the beginning of the batman 2 why stretch it why go beyond what you want because eventually you know what goes up must come down right so everything's going to come crashing down maybe not Maybe not. I'm hoping this show also sticks to landing, but so far so good with the Penguin. But what could be next? The Wrap now on October 25th, The Wrap had an article released about Matt Reeves. And Matt Reeves had a few interesting tidbits in there. It's a very good article. But let me read you a couple pieces of it that really stuck out to me. Al's dead. I left him too. First, he said the following. I can tell you this. We would love to be able to do more. But I can also say that we are already talking to HBO about more. This, of course, is about another season of The Penguin, potentially. Reeves teased, The Batman and its upcoming sequel are so strongly focused on Batman's point of view, Reeves would love to focus more on the villain. The opportunity of being able to then on HBO and go and explore characters that wouldn't be able to have the, that kind of real estate creatively as we were able to do with Oz. That is something that we are talking to HBO about, he explained. They're very excited about that idea. That's something that we really, really hope we're going to be able to do. And he goes on to say, 
After a pause, Reeves concluded, we've got the Batman, we've got the Penguin, and who knows what's next. Who knows what's next? We don't know. We haven't seen the script for the Batman 2. He has. It is done. He finished it just over a month ago on Batman Day. It's done. He knows what's up. There's speculation that Hush is going to be a villain. There's speculation Court of Owls will be a villain. Speculation that Mr. Freeze is going to be a villain. I'm going to go a step further. Poison Ivy is very possible in this. I can very much see Poison Ivy making an appearance. There is a whole rose gallery of villains, and Batman has, in my opinion, the best comic book villains you can get. Spider-Man's pretty close, but Batman, I think, has top-notch villains. And a lot of them, most of them, fit within the Reeves-verse because Batman is a superhero with no superpowers, and his villains, especially way, way, way back, were like that, right? Hugo Strange, Dr. Death, all those guys, they're very similar. Even the Joker, he's just a mad clown at the end of the day. Sometimes chemicals, sometimes not. Depends on which version you're reading. Let's put a smile on that face. So there's a lot of avenues for Matt Reeves to go down, and it all depends, I think, on what he has and who he has in the Batman 2 as the villain and what world that would be. Obviously, HBO's going to want a big-name villain to spearhead the show. But let's look at someone that we've already got. I'm not going to talk about Riddler. We all know Riddler's there. And I'm not going to even go with Joker, because I think Joker, I think you could do a great Joker story. I think they've done that, though. Maybe the second one didn't work out but they've done something but what about Catwoman Matt Reeves has already teased we're going to get more Catwoman and understand more about Catwoman so a series based on her escapades in Bloodhaven would be very intriguing and could make for a great HBO series the series could dive into her survival in the gritty Bloodhaven underworld balancing her morally complex character arc with Bloodhaven's corruption and her evolving motivations post Batman Zoe Kravitz's portrayal would aim to ground Selena's emotional journey while keeping her connections, comic lore, fresh and relatable. Could fit into the genre of neo-noir crime thriller with elements of character drama and psychological tension. The genre would allow the show to dive into Bloodhaven's underbelly, a city rife with corruption and danger, perfect for exploring Selena's complex morality and her battle for survival. Neo-noir's gritty, dark aesthetic suits the tone of Reeves' Batman universe and would enhance themes of betrayal, trust, and self-reliance, while the thriller aspect would keep the stakes high, matching Selena's unique blend of skill and vulnerability. And I think that would work. And I would totally watch a neo-noir crime thriller with Selena Kyle in Bloodhaven. Is Nightwing there? I doubt. And then, of course, is the one that everybody seems to be gung-ho about. Not Hush, Mr. Freeze. Maybe not everybody's gung-ho, but a lot of people are gung-ho on Mr. Freeze. But I think Mr. Freeze could work. Their part of me says it could come off as a cheap, sci-fi gimmick but another part of me says this character could easily fit in the Reeves verse if done properly and right now I have no reason to believe that Matt Reeves would do anything but succeed with a character like Mr. Freeze. A Mr. Freeze storyline could offer a compelling exploration of tragic morally complex character fitting well with the gritty grounded tone of Reeves Gotham. In a Reeves produced HBO show Freeze could be reimagined as a brilliant cryogenic scientist whose life and career collapse after his wife Nora contracts a terminal illness. In this adaptation, he might turn to Gotham's corrupt underworld for funding to support his his research, only to be betrayed. His ensuing experiments driven by a frantic need to save Nora could accidentally result in his irreversible condition. Rather than a high-tech suit, he might rely on makeshift tech, perhaps a rudimentary cooling system he continually upgrades to stay alive, which adds a raw, eerie tone to his character. This approach could fit well within the Reeves verse, where villains like the Riddler are shown as damaged and disillusioned rather than superhuman. The series could explore Freeze's growing desperation and isolation using noir storytelling to make viewers question whether he's truly evil or simply a man destroyed by grief. His cold, detached persona might mask the emotional toll of his transformation and his clashes with Batman could serve as a study in moral ambiguity if, of course, Batman were to show. Ultimately, Freeze's presence in a Reeves universe series could offer a poignant narrative that goes beyond supervillain tropes to examine themes of grief, survival, and moral compromise. Reeves' approach could ensure that Freeze isn't just another villain, but a tragic, sympathetic figure whose actions raise difficult, ethical questions, making him a perfect fit for this darker, more realistic Gotham. Those are a couple of ideas that I would love to see. I'm sure Matt Reeves has a few 
ideas as well. I'm curious to see what could happen. One thing that I love about this prospect is the idea of fleshing out characters. These characters that, you know, they fit in the Batman. And even with Penguin, a character like Penguin who has minimal screen time in the Batman, you still understand his character and you have a good knowledge of what he's all about. But you get to flesh him out on HBO over eight episodes, over eight hours of television. You can flesh out this character and the story that surrounds him. And if you can do that with Batman's rogues gallery, I think DC... Not just Batman, but DC has something very special on their hands. You have movies highlighting Batman from Batman's point of view, from the hero's point of view, and the TV show to flesh out all of the villains all surrounding this character. And then when you get to it, it's almost like reverse Avengers at this point. And when you get to the villain in the movie, you have a better understanding of who the villain is, what makes the villain tick, and how much Batman is in. Like... He's in it deep with the Penguin right now. And the show's not even over. Penguin's not even at its worst yet. Batman's in deep. You could do that with so many villains. And then that would raise the stakes of every movie. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think HBO, it's a no-brainer for HBO. That's hit after hit. As long as, of course, the writing is right, the directing is right, and the casting is superb. But so far, so good on all fronts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Would love to hear your thoughts on more Matt Reeves HBO Batman villain stories. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe.